Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to Roll and Keep Phantom Tabletops, a weekly show that's all about playing, teaching, designing, and learning about settings primed with the Cortex role-playing system. If this is your first time here, hello, welcome. I am so, so happy you're here. I think that you picked a great place to jump in for the first time. Uh, my name is Millie Doucette. I'm the community manager for Cortex, and I'm going to be your friendly GM for this month's show. Uh, you might be asking yourself, Millie, what the heck is the Cortex Prime? Well, it is a toolbox you can use to play or create any genre or setting of TTRPG that you can possibly think of. And as an example of that, we're going to be playing one of the ready-made settings that you can find in the book. It is called Eidolon Alpha. It is a, a Hellenic mythological, mythological. That is the new word that I've decided represents this setting, fantasy setting. You can, again, any TTRPG of your dreams, including a mythological setting. Um, sound like fun? Yeah, you can learn about Cortex Prime over at CortexRPG.com, or if you're lucky, hey, you might win a copy here today, because we're going to give away four copies throughout today's show. Keep an eye on chat for your opportunity. Our wonderful mod will be doing those. Speaking of which, we're also looking for some more mods to join the team, and you can find a link in chat for that as well. Enough of all of that. Who are these really gorgeous, talented people that I have with me here today? I'm very excited to announce my players of Eidolon Alpha. We have Cortex Prime designer, creative director, the guy who created Eidolon Alpha. It is Cam Banks. Hello. Hello. We've got our uh, writer, performer, and streamer. You can find uh, he's written a bunch of articles for D&D Beyond. You can see his face across an incredible uh, assemblage of games all across Twitch. It is D'Angelo Mario. Hello, hello. You may know her from Rivals of Waterdeep as a designer and writer for Into the Motherlands or for her freelance work, which includes the upcoming official D&D adventure, Critical Role Call of the Netherdeep, Alitia Jaquis. And our favorite half good, half bad, half boy RPG performer and variety streamer, who you can find over on Stream Punks or Power Play RPG, it is Sam Delev. I am so excited to be at a table with all four of you. This is going to be so incredible. Uh, but with all that said, I would just love to go ahead and get into this because today we're going to do something a little bit different here on Roll and Keep. We're going to do some character creation before our show. So you're going to get to see the story that we plan to tell and the characters we want to tell with it come to life right here in front of you and learn how to do it yourself. Uh, so let's go ahead and get things started with Eidolon Alpha to Cathlon. The world that we enter is a world of neoclassical fables and legends and godlike spirits who watch over a thriving civilization of city-states ringing a bright and shining sea, the Sea of Corsu. It is a place of exquisite temples and marble architecture, a place of thriving orchards and rich mines, and also a place of division. You see, these godlike spirits, the Decantheon, the great Eidolons, they squabble like us, have foibles like us, only when they do it, it changes our world. Their differences become ours, especially when they choose some among us, to become vessels of their power, vessels in exchange for bringing their will into the world. And this is the trouble which has been escalating lately. The city-states have been trapped in an ever-repeating cycle of civil war, one cult against another, alliances made, broken, and made again. And so finally, one city-state has stepped forward. The Phoenix cultists of Red Mium have called a ceasefire and have made an offer to all nine of the other city-states to visit their own for an event that will be the first of its kind, a decathlon, a sporting event bringing together Endarks, the vessels of all ten Eidolons, along with their culture, their food, their festivities, for a moment of togetherness. You four are among the Endarks who will be in Red Mium for this event, who you are, why you're there, that is what we're going to discover as we make our characters. Today, I'm very, very excited. So to just start us off, I'm going to sort of just introduce, hey, Cortex Prime in general, how do you even start making a character for this game? Uh, so in Cortex Prime, every single game is going to have its own bunches of what we call trait sets, which are just a whole bunch of similar traits grouped together under one thing, and anytime you roll and you're going to use one of those traits, you're going to pick one of them, and it has a dice associated with it that you're going to grab, throw into a dice pool, and roll with. Uh, so in Eidolon Alpha, these are going to be broken down into three things. We've got our distinctions, 
which is in every Cortex Prime game. And we sort of look at that as, hey, what's the elevator pitch of this character? Like, give me three points. We're going to learn a lot about them from those three points. And that is going to be this core that we work from. And that's going to probably be the first thing that we're going to talk about once we start building. We also have attributes, which are sort of the uh, very common, like you're used to in every TTRPG and video game and all these other places. Uh, attributes in this game are going to be your, I've got to go to the right page, it's going to be courage, grace, guile, reason, and vigor are going to be the five things that are going to represent your characters here. And it's like, hey, how do you want to approach a problem? Uh, what are the things that are going to cause a problem if you approach with them? And that's going to be your dice ranges from a d4 to a d12, because that is the range of dice that we have in this game. Your last uh, set of traits is going to be your roles. And roles are groups of skills. So in this game, we have warrior, priest, and scout. And those will just combine a bunch of different kinds of skills that you would imagine to associate with those three types of roles with the ability of also adding your own role if you want to. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in detail when we get to it, but we have to start with distinctions in order to start getting a feel for our characters, especially because in Eidolon Alpha, your distinction choices are gonna to start to shape your attributes and start to kind of build up your character in that way. So your first decision in Eidolon Alpha is going to be looking at the Endark archetype. And this is, hey, you have been chosen by an Eidolon. They have called to you. They have given you this power, this uh, these incredible abilities, as well as uh, the power to summon them, this great spirit, a kaiju-sized spirit, which is very cool and very fun. But of course, you know, comes with the cost of, hey, you have to actually do the things I want you to do. You know, like our favorite kind of like warlocks and Faustian bargains in some ways. Um, so we've got five to choose from in the Idol on Alpha book, which are kind of the protagonist and darks, but because this story is about, hey, we're bringing together all of the city-states together, uh, we've put together also five, the five antagonist Eidolons as well. So we've got a whole 10 choices to pick from. And the Eidolons are kind of these mythological creatures. They're combinations of different animals and they have some different traits associated with them. When you pick one, it's going to give you uh, some powers that you get to use. It's going to give you something called special effects, which are ways that you can sort of bend and break rules for yourself. And it's also going to give you highlight attributes. And what those are is they're going to be what gives you a higher rating in those attributes I described earlier. Uh, so there are 10 choices. I'm going to run through them really quickly. And then we're going to start seeing, like, what are the things catching your eyes here at the table? You've looked at them before, but we have the Chimera. Everybody knows the chimera, you know, body of a goat, head of a lion, tail of a serpent. And here they also, they have this fear ability. They've got fire breath. They can shape shift. Uh, we have the gorgon, a winged boar with the tail of a snake. Uh, they can petrify people. They can fly and they can make their own skin into stone to defend themselves. We have the griffin, which is our favorite body of a lion, head and wings of an eagle. You get flight, you get this incredible speed, and you get deadly claws that you get to use. Uh, the minotaur, which you can, uh, you know, you get the keen sense as a minotaur. You can get yourself out of, like, any maze. You know where exits are, all that kind of thing. But you also have this incredible strength. And, you know, sort of inspired by Crete is, you know, hey, you can transform things into metal. Uh, you can tr rather yourself into metal. So you can give yourself this metallic skin to defend yourself. Um, and the wyvern is the last of the protagonist endarchs. Uh, they are the uh, serpent, but they also have wings and they have a crocodile head, uh, which, I mean, I love crocodiles. It's one of my favorites. They get flight, they get sharp teeth. Uh, it's a cool bite. They can also stretch themselves. So if you are an endark of this, you could just like stretch your arms and legs and body around in very weird ways, a little bit of uh, body horror, or it can just be a little bit slapstick depending on what kind of game people are playing. Uh, so those are your five protagonists. You also have your five antagonist ones, which we are going to use as protagonists here. They are not necessarily the bad folks. We have the manticore, body of a lion, head of a shark, tail of a scorpion. They got some poisonous skin. They got the amazing jaw, amazing bite and poison breath. You have the Hydra, which, I mean, we all know from mythology, you can regrow stuff, so it's a really hard to get you down. You also have a poison breath, and you are also very aquatic, so it gives you kind of options with the water. The Phoenix, so these are the people that are hosting this decathlon. Uh, fiery Eagle with the head of a rooster. You're immortal. Phoenixes 
are immortal, straight up. It's amazing. They can fly and they got a fire breath like the chimera. We got the leviathan, a whale with iron scales, super strong, like iron body, super aquatic. And finally the siren, uh, which is the owl with the head of a jackal that has that deafening scream, deadly claws and flight. Uh, so these are your 10 Eidolons and they're all gonna represent these different Endarks. Uh, so I'm just gonna throw it to whoever has is like, I already know which one I want. Uh, let's start with you. Anybody have one that they're like, yes, I'm ready. Matia, you're yes. first, do it. I am first because uh, I opened the, I was gonna pick one of the antagonist protagonist Endarks, yeah. but uh, then I saw a Minotaur and Minotaurs are like my jam. So I'm gonna be a Minotaur. Good choice. Oh my God. Excellent. So yeah, you're going to go ahead and add uh, Minotaur's Metal Arc is going to be that first distinction on your sheet. You've already got that first distinction locked down. Okay. Uh, and then it's going to be adding the powers that are written there for you. So you have the three powers. And the thing with that is, is you're not just tied to only using those when you use that distinction. You can use one of those whenever they would apply in the game. It's going to be like, yeah, this. I'm using my super senses for this. Get that extra D8 into my dice pool. Pretty nice. awesome. And as well, you're going to get, uh, so you've got hinder there, which everybody gets. Hinders mm -hmm. on every single distinction. And what that means is, in this situation, this fact about my character is actually more likely to cause a problem or have some kind of interesting narrative complication. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get a plot point, the meta currency of the game that I can spend to do really cool stuff. But I'm going to use a D4 instead, which is a lower die, not as helpful, and it can roll ones more often. And ones aren't great in this game. Uh, so you've got Hinder on all of them, and you also have two other options you'll find in the book. You get to pick which one of those two you'd really oh, like to have. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I for you, to... it's like you can step up that bronze skin to defend better against natural weapons, or you can just spend a plot point to just find your way out of any maze or building okay. or anything, because you're literally just like, I, why, how am I going to get stuck here? I'm a Minotaur. <laughs> like, screw you. Right. Uh, so you have those options. So go ahead and think about, like, what appeals to you as you start kind of thinking about that character. Uh Sam, do you have a favorite that's sticking out to you here? Uh, I get to instantly go to backup, and because you opened up antagonists uh, to us, I'm going to take the siren. How would I not want to be yes. uh, my own yeah. ambulance? <laughs> um, but I love the siren. So you get the siren there, you get scream, claws, and flight. Again, you also get the hinder. You get uh, that as well, and you have two SFX there to choose from. Yes. Uh, Let me lure men to their demise on the rocks. Yes. Let's go. <laughs> lure right. men, women, and them. Like anybody. Nobody we can are escape. Equally opportunistically <laughs> luring you yes. to your demise. Absolutely. That's the promise here among the sirens. <laughs> I think I already know my character. Do you want me to wait and then let you know later? Or do you want me to just go with uh, or say it right now? Well, what, yeah. What, which of these end arc options is the one that's like. I think one. I'm definitely going to go with the, the Chimera. Uh, yes. A very it's obnoxious Chimera. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the Chimera, so, uh, you know, the Chimera definitely has all this buildup of they are very much like, they can change their faces. So it's really hard to tell who in a Chimera cult stronghold is who. Uh, so it can make for a lot of just interesting, like, political intrigue and also, you know, performance kind of things, bard kind of uh, angles. And I feel like that definitely kind of gives way to, you know, around other people who can't change their face at any time, all of the fun chaos that comes with that. So I love that for Chimera. You get fear, fire breath, and shape shifting. And again, your choice of those two special SFX there. You can either increase the ability of your fear, or you can, uh, you know, have a reroll ability tied to your shape shifting. Cam, mm -hmm. which one is standing out for you? So we had a conversation about this earlier. I think I'm going to go with the Phoenix. Yeah. And I want to put a different spin on this, at least in terms of, because you were saying, I didn't know about the uh, them hosting the games or whatever. I think it would be fun if I was not the original choice. Ooh, so, interesting. Ooh. The, hosting, the hosting city-state, who's brought everyone together, already picked their end arc for this, but I am not that person. And totally. I, and but we'll have to obviously explore why I was the runner-up or what else. Yeah, I love it. So yeah, like literally like there was an Endarch chosen to like represent them at the games. Mm -hmm. And for all of you, like, you know, there can be Endarchs coming for other reasons. You could be a politician, you could be a noble of some kind, you could be a performer, you could just be 
hey, I'm, I'm a spy, I'm coming. There's lots of reasons you might be coming here, but I love this idea. There was this Endark chosen to be like, I am going to win these games and represent the Phoenix cult. And then for some reason, now it's you instead. Yeah. Uh, and we will totally explore that. I love it. So yeah, you're going to be able to, you're going to have immortality as one of your powers, which is amazing. Um, but you know, hey, immortality doesn't save you from everything. It just saves you from being dead. Um, and some SFX for you to choose there. Uh, and all of you also get to now start defining some of your attributes because of those choices. So if you go look at your attributes on your sheet, they're all going to start at a D6. So that means, hey, if I use this, I got this very average, I roll a D6 in my pool, great. But all of you are going to step up two of those based on your choice. So the Phoenix, for example, is going to get grace and vigor. And when you step something up in Cortex, it means you're going to just increase the die size by one size. So D6 will become a D8. If you stepped it up again, you'd go from a D8 to a D10. And the opposite is something you'll also see in this game, which is stepping things down, which will just be going in the opposite direction. Uh, so Chimera uh, D'Angelo gets Grace and Guile. Uh, Minotaur gets Guile and Vigor. And Siren gets Guile and Reason. And so I now we've got that here. first. Oh, yeah. So much Guile. Yeah, this, this is a very Guile-heavy party. And <laughs> I feel like that just means there's going to be some interesting intrigue options for this. And I love it. Um, so we've got those first ones being chosen. And then the next thing that we're going to look at is your second distinction. We have our end arc distinction. And this is kind of the core of that character. This is you were chosen for some reason, which we'll get into, by your Eidolon. And you've got these cool powers. And you've got this ability to summon your Eidolon. It's super cool. But you also have those roles. Like, what is kind of your place in society? What were you trained as? Or, like, where did you get your learning? And there are a few options here. Anybody who's following along with the book, this starts on page 143. Uh, and so you've got three main roles, which are warrior, priest, and scout. So a warrior, that can be, like, literally, like, hey, we're, we're down, we're fighting. Uh, but it can also be, hey, I'm a strategist. Hey, anything that you would think, okay, this is going to be associated with a kind of more physical approach, a more strength-based approach, a more, you know, battle-based approach. And again, sports, I'm going to include warrior stuff in sports. So if you're looking at that angle, warrior is going to be something you really want to look at. And it's also priest, part of your, your part in society yes. too, right? It is, yes. This is kind of like where you fit into your society. So yeah, warriors, they're going to also have those athletes in them. We also have the priest, which is sort of that uh, really highly educated role. And they're also probably like you know, higher ranking in that society because they have all of these city states are controlled by these cults. Uh, so if you are in sort of this the priest side of things, you are tied into kind of where all of the power is centralized. Like, where is this coming from? Uh, and so you're going to have access to information. You have knowledge, anything that's about kind of knowing things. Uh, you know, having information on your side, the priest is going to be sort of your side of things. Uh, and then finally, our scout, and that's going to show you kind of knowing places, pathways, roads, being able to navigate areas, find clues, sneak around. Uh, those are all going to fit into your scout uh, side of things. So which of these kind of appeals to you the most? Alternatively, if you're saying, hey, yes, like these three are great, but I have like a very specific thing. I don't think it's covered by these. You could, if you wanted to, think of something else to define you. So there are some examples in the book. You could be a crafter, a merchant, an oracle, a uh, performer, a thief. So if there's something that you're like, okay, I actually think this is the most important thing about my character, you can make your own. And what you're going to do for that second distinction is pick one of those roles and make a distinction based on it. And you'll see again examples in that book. So you've got warrior and some ideas. It's like a keen-eyed archer or strong-armed hammerer. And if you decide to go with that, that means the warrior is going to be your best role. Uh, and if you go with priest, you know, there could be scholar of the sciences or uh, adept of the prophecies. Scouts could maybe be tireless hunter of beasts or a patient warden of the borders. And so you're just kind of looking at something that describes when you look at warrior, when you look at scout, what is the thing that your character does that fits that? What, where do you come from? What is your, what is your skill set? And same with the other roles, if you decide to make that your best one, and this is going to be that second distinction slot. Does anybody have an idea of like, I want to have a high warrior, I want to have a high scout, or I want something warrior else? Warrior for me, for sure, yeah. Okay, we got a chimera warrior. And what kind uh, of warrior do you want to be, D'Angelo? Uh, strong-armed hammer, I think. Okay, I yeah. like it. 
Yeah, really, I want to be a luchador, but like, I'll, I'll no, use a hammer if I need hey, to. Hey, hey, you can, like, you can make your own. Like, you're not locked into that. these examples. So if you want to be some kind of like, if you want to put some wrestling flair into this, do it. Especially because this is a decathlon be- in like a Hellenic society. There's definitely wrestling. There definitely wrestling. You could, you could create your own sort of double barrel thing the same way. That something, 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 you know, just a yeah. adjective. Yeah, about, like strong armed grappler. That works perfect. Okay, good. Yeah, Latia, what is appealing to you? Uh, I'm going to be a priest. Ooh, okay, yeah. Minotaur priest. Yeah, and in the in the sense that um, Minotaurs are really good at finding their way out of things, but like she's using her abilities to make maps. Ooh, okay. So she's like a a, a like a, an eidetic cartographer. <laughs> oh, That's I love that. And I really love that too, because uh, Regnium, in fact, is a city that's been really closed off to everywhere else. They've been really defended. They didn't want to let people in. So this is like the first opportunity that anybody will have to be able to kind of like make maps of this place. That's a really kind of like, oh, of course I want to go to this place now that they're finally opening the doors and letting people in. Oh yeah, uh, that's why I'm here. <laughs> sick. Heck yeah, I love it. Uh, Sam, what is standing out to you? Uh I'm so far looking at a hunter-inflected scout. If the sirens are pirate kings, in effect, uh, the hunter who lays the trap. Okay. Just a good good saboteur kind of thing? Yeah, you know, uh, luring to the rocks. We're we're staying on theme. I love it. Uh, That is great. We got a scout, we got a priest, we got a warrior cam. What is appealing to your Phoenix? Uh, so I could go and do something that's entirely different and, yeah. and pick a, a fourth thing, but I think I will also go with Scout. But in this case, I'm more of a warden. I think that you describe Regnium as being locked up like almost like a fortress and very well yeah. protected. So my my sort of pitch is not necessarily a warrior, but someone whose job it is to make sure that <clears throat> they watch over it. So almost like an observer, um, a um, a defender or warden of the of the border. So different from what Sam's taking, which is very much hunting and trapping. Um, more totally. Like, yeah, keeping an eye out. Yeah, so more of like the scout side of things and one is more the side of setting traps, ambushes, sabotaging. Love it. So we've got two different kinds of scouts. So that's going to be, so you're going to kind of write what that distinction is. Like, is it, you know, so strong-armed grappler is going to be the second distinction for D'Angelo. So like, kind of wording that uh, for yourself. So eidetic cartographer for Latia. That's going to be that second distinction for you. And then whatever one you picked, you're going to get a D10 in that role on your sheet. That's going to be your highest role for you. We're going to come back to the others later, but right now you got your D10. This is the thing that you are really, really good at. And where does that go on the character sheet again? Yeah, so you're going to put that D10 is going to be for you in Priest. Oh, no, the, the distinction. I'm sorry. Gotcha. It'll be the second distinction box under your Endark distinction. So you've got your Endark distinction and your SFX, and then you got a second distinction box. This will be your second one, and then we'll do your third one after. Got it. Okay. Heck yeah. Okay. I am oh, caught up now. Uh, as well, because of your, your top pick, you're going to get more steps into those attributes. So D'Angelo, you're going to step up your courage and your vigor. Uh, Latia, you get guile and reason, more guile. Um, and both Sam and Cam get grace and guile stepped up. So much guile. All the guile. (laughs) Um, excellent. Our final distinction is reform. This is where you get to say, if there was another character who was a Minotaur's metal arc, and they were an eidetic cartographer, this would be different. This would set us apart from each other. And this extra thing should also be something that you can say, yes, I can use this as a positive to help myself, but it can also be something that I can twist into, this is actually going to be complicating the situation. So you can hinder it, like I was describing earlier. Uh, One way to approach these is kind of like statements of some kind. So some examples that we have here. Trouble is my middle name, or I could never refuse a secret, or my word is my bond and my bond is stone. So it's kind of some kind of statement that can represent your character and sort of define them in a really unique way. So Cam, what are you thinking for your second choice Phoenix scout? 
second choice phoenix so i was just running through some some phrasing in my head that um uh something along the lines of you know not quite the same as uh always a bridesmaid never the bride but that's kind of like that yeah absolutely something that sounds a bit more hellenic perhaps uh, but that's the idea you know uh, yeah yeah always no, i love it yeah, there's a way to like, because, you know, even just getting picked by the end arc, maybe like even the call like came to you mm -hmm. later. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I love it. Um, that's excellent. Uh, D'Angelo, oh, do you have an idea of what you want that third distinction to, the to party, be? Call it. Oh, last one of the party. I like it. Uh, my character's name is Churo. And um, the statement that I have is Churo is always ready to drop elbows. So <laughs> maybe that's leaning too much into the fighter role. No, goes. I love it. Yeah, you're just because that really describes something that you're it's not just that, hey, like I am a stronger grappler. It is like I will fight at a moment's notice. I'm not gonna that's that can definitely cause problems. It can also be really helpful depending on I also want to be like five five so that way I'm like the shortest in the party. Yes. And have I love that. <laughs> I love it's so great. Um, absolutely, that makes me so happy. So yes, we have the strong arm grappler, the short guy or short uh person. I guess we don't know their gender yet. Apologies. Uh and they are just always ready to get into a fight. And I love it. Get that tussle going. Uh, Latia, what is your idea for your third distinction here? Um, it's got to be something about how whenever you're lost, you always go left. Or like in a maze, everybody's like, always go left. That, that leads you to the exit. Yeah. So it's like when she panics about something, I don't know, like. Uh, <laughs> you can even like, just call it always go left. And yeah, it just represents yeah, we'll that idea it. of like, yes, always I always left. kind of make the same decision, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, totally. Yeah, just love it. Uh, Sam. Oh, um, I'm looking for the Hellenic variant of lead them into temptation and deliver them to evil. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I think that's, that's just it. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's go with that. That sounds good. For me. Yeah. Actually, I got like I'm gonna change mine to I bite my thumb at the because I love that line. Yes, yes. Oh, I do love that too. I love the like modern version of that. Like, do you bite your thumb at me, bro? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I bite my thumb at thumb, oh, but no, I don't bite my thumb at you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yes, I love it so much. But yeah, yeah, definitely you can I'd probably like shorten that one, Sam, for for your own sanity when you're using it. Um, but I love just yes. I'm not just like tempting people, I'm tempting them specifically because I want them to like make a bad decision. I want, you want to be like the bad influence on people. Yes. Would never. <laughs> <laughs> never, that's not me. Um, excellent. So we have those three distinctions formed up and those have, you know, you've had those ones that have modified your attributes a little bit. We're going to come and finish attributes after, but right now we're going to finish up those roles. So you have a D10, that is your best thing, you're also going to get a D8 and a D6. You have an option here of just putting a D8 and D6 in those other two roles that are there, or this is another opportunity to say, actually, I want to put a fourth thing in here. And if you do that, that fourth thing that you create will be either an eight or a six, and whatever of your other three roles is left behind is going to get a D4. And that means that that thing is, you're probably going to cause problems if, you know, somebody asks you to do the warrior thing or somebody asks you to do the priest thing and so again some examples of a fourth thing you could put be like a performer or a thief or a an oracle there's lots of like anything you can think of that you think is also wide enough that you might be able to apply it to a lot of different situations uh and as or as well like it is my job as gm to like look at the things you've chosen and put you in a situation where you can use it where if you pick i want to have a crafter thing in there okay, I've got to make sure that we've got some stuff in this game that is going to give you a chance to use that. Uh, it was a D8 yeah. and D6? Yes, yeah, so you you'll okay. have that D10 already, and then a D8 and D6, unless you'd like to add a brand new fourth thing. Okay. Cam, what are you thinking for your final roll spread? Um, I'm thinking definitely it's uh, D8 and D6 uh, for Warrior D8 and Priest D6, I think. Um, Excellent. Although, if, if Sam is going with the exact same lineup, uh, that'll be exciting, but that's fine. They express it's themselves different very way. differently anyway. Uh, exactly. I wouldn't worry. Love it. So you've got your Scout 10, Warrior 8, Priest 6. Excellent. Your roles are done. Sam, what are you thinking for yours? 
I'm thinking warrior d8. Uh, no, warrior d6, singer d8. Okay, I like it. I would be remiss um, if I weren't. Like, I, I, this character might not be here to win its sports. <laughs> no, I love it. Um, and as well, if you want to like generalize that more to performer d8, I'm totally fine with that as well. Um, then you can apply different kinds of performance. Um, and yeah, so you've got that. And that would mean that your leftover uh, of the three is going to be a D4. So it's, that one's not so great, but hey. I'm not the priestiest. It's no. fine. <laughs> need to know things. I just, I just need to sing and trap people and make them make bad decisions for my entertainment. It's great. Uh, Latia, what are you thinking? Um, I'm choosing an other for my D8, and I'm, yeah. I'm I'm thinking of a better phrase for it, but like I'm taking crafter, but it's going to be mainly um like writing, like writing yeah. and and uh and drawing and like art artistry, perhaps. I uh, love artistry. I think that's fantastic. Uh, yes, artistry is getting the D8 and then scout for D6 because nice. Minotaurs already kind of know how to get around, so I feel like she can take a she can take a hit there, and she's definitely not a warrior. <laughs> I love it. And I love especially because Minotaurs have strength. Like, that's one of your powers. But it's like, I'm not a warrior. Like, I may be, like, really, really strong, but I'm I'm not going to get into a fight. I'm going to do other things uh, with right. that power. And I think that's awesome. Uh, D'Angelo, what you get? And you said we could put performer as an option? Uh, totally. Be, okay, okay. Because I want to be an actor. Because obviously, you know, got to go with the whole persona yeah. and everything. So, mm -hmm. uh, D six uh, performer, and then priest will be eight because he's he's got to pray when he does these moves to make sure he doesn't have to medical bills after. So, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We have this very performative uh, performer who is or warrior rather. Yeah, performative performer. Just all the performance. I got a performer <laughs> ten, performer eight, performer six. Yeah. Um, yes, excellent. That's great. Um, so now you have those roles, you have your distinctions, and our last thing for the sheet side of stuff is the attributes. Um, so the last thing we get to do here, I think we get, I have to double check this. Cam, do you remember, is it extra steps up or just a chance to modify the steps? Uh, I think you're stuck at the ones that you get from those, aren't you? I think you can... I mean, I only wrote this. I don't remember it. It's not like I, I... it's been a long time. <laughs> Look, Cam has been heads down on Tales of Zadia, the Dragon Prince RPG, which is going to be fantastic. You can check out some stuff now, TalesofZadia.com. Uh, but it does it. mean it's amazing. Yeah. Going on a different game all of a sudden is like, wait, what were the rules of this game I wrote? <laughs> um, yeah, you can do a step up or step down of things. So if you say, you know what, I've got my courage right now is at a D10, but actually, I'd kind of like to get my reason up a little bit more you can step one of those down in order to step something else up and you can even step something down to a d4 if you want to step something else up so if you want to get something really high if you want two things that are really high you can sort of make a sacrifice of whom <laughs> of abilities not of people yes yeah. not this time at least not this time. <laughs> next time for sure I feel like I should have been a phoenix because I'm probably going to be the sacrifice every time. <laughs> it just makes it way more dramatic when, like, the person who cannot be immortal is the one that it's, is in danger. The one, like, like, yeah. yeah, you're you're in danger all the time, but you can't just come back. Uh, fabulous. Yes. Question for Please. attributes: Like, what would you say is the sportsy one? bigger so you've got so courage is going to definitely be like this is my determination i'm going to face down something that is difficult and scary um, and i'm going to get through it grace is going to be you know that ability to be sneaky a balance a sleight of hand like all those sorts of things with just your your physical graceful motions if you're a dancer if you're flying i feel like a lot of that's going to tie to grace guile is your ability to influence people deceive them persuade them uh, it's all about you know working with people reason is hey can i understand this do i know this it's all about knowledge and uh thinking and then vigor is your body your vitality your strength your ability to kind of do things that are physical perfect thank you Amazing. uh i have chosen to step down my grace to up my mm -hmm. reason because minotaur in a china shop minotaur and a pottery shop <laughs> is absolutely the way I'm, I'm choosing to go. Oh my gosh. And that would also be, for another Minotaur character with low grace, would be a great third distinction also. 
and I also stepped down my reason and stepped up my vigor. So like, hopefully someone will be the reasonable part for some party. Yeah. I mean, let has got a high reason now. I've got high uh, reason it's now. great. Oh, you do. Okay. Okay. There you go. Yeah. yeah. And actually, got- I, I am going to change my free from distinction to Minotaur in a pottery shop. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and this idea, especially because like you're not a fighter or anything. So I'm just imagining like trying not to, but it's hard when you are, got, you got the horns, you've got everything going on. It's very difficult. I look very imposing, but really it, just, it all just gets in the way. I love it. Oh, I'm so, so here for the soft boy Minotaur concept. Like, <laughs> no, oh, God. Um, uh, is anyone, Sam, Cam, are either of you adjusting your uh, attributes? I might. I'm I'm sitting on stepping down my courage a little bit and uh, stepping up my grace. It seems relevant to concept. And frankly, I think one is sneaky because one is not always the most physically confrontational or courageous. Yeah, absolutely. Find another way. I like that. Grace doesn't always have to be dexterous. Mm -hmm. Yes, true. There is grace under fire, but not this one. Yeah, no, you can definitely, like, say, well, you know, hey, can Grace, like, do this in this situation as well? I'm a pretty, like, flexible uh, GM as well. If you give me a good reason that something applies, I will be like, yeah, do it. If it seems like you're just trying to use a D12 every time and you're really stretching things, then I might be like, no, I think this one's going to be that uh, D4 uh, Grace you got there. Let's see this time. Um, so, yeah. But generally, I'm pretty flexible. Cam, are you going to adjust your attributes? Yeah, um, I actually quite like the idea of being a lot more uh, well-rounded instead of being, well, like right now I have a D10 and Grace, right? And my mm-hmm. um, D8s are in Guile and Vigor. I think I'm going to step the Grace down and put Courage up to D8 because I feel that this character actually should be a whole lot more courageous than that. But they're not the most courageous. In fact, they're, they're not yeah. the most of anything. Like they have no Yeah, again, it's anything. like you were just kind of, you know, you're average and nobody really wanted you first. Yeah. But they're going to have you was- now. <laughs> if the grace was D10, they would have picked me, obviously, but like, they didn't, so yeah. it's not, it isn't about that. I love it. So, yeah, we've got these character sheets now, so we have this idea of who we have here. Uh, and so when you're rolling in this game, you're going to end up picking, you know, one of those dice from each of those categories. You're going to say, okay, what distinction applies here? Which role am I using? Like, what kinds of skills are applying here? And how am I approaching this? Which attribute am I approaching this with? Uh, and that's going to be how you sort of like build a pool every time. And then you're also going to say, am I using one of my powers? And then that gets thrown in on top of those other dice. You roll them and you end up choosing two of them to make a total. So you'll be like, which two rolled well generally? Hey, these are my highest. I'm going to take those as my total. And then you also get an effect die. And an effect die, uh, you take another dice that you have left over. And it only matters the size of the die. It does not matter what it rolled. You could have a d10 that rolled a 2. That's a really good effect die. And what that means is how effective was this? Uh, If you've got a d4 effect die, it's like you just barely made this work. Kind of squeaked by on what you were trying to do. You have a d12 effect die. It's like this is the best possible result of what you just tried to do. Um, So that's kind of just the basics of how these roles work. And as we play, we're going to walk through all of that. Um, But the other thing that you can do as Endarks is you can summon your Eidolon. And when you summon them, they end up kind of emerging out of the region around, you know, pulling out of the nature, out of the structures and kind of like manifesting. And when you do that, you shut down that first distinction. You lose access to it because all of that energy that you've been given, you are funneling into this kind of summoned form of this Eidolon. But it also means you get to roll really, really big dice and do really, really cool things. So you get to act on your own turn still as a person. You get to still do stuff. And then you get to make your idol on do things. You get to command it. And you get to roll D12s and D10s. And you get something called scale. Scale is really big in idol on alpha. And what that means is you're going to get a bonus die in the dice pool. And after you roll, you get three dice for the total instead of two dice, which is a pretty sizable advantage. It can give you totals, you know, above 20 as opposed to, you know, totals above 10 as being really high. Um, so it is very epic when you finally get to kind of pull out a really big Eidolon. And we can have massive battles where multiple Eidolons have been summoned. And some of them have enemies with each other. Each cult has a direct enemy. And those Eidolons really want to fight. They don't want to work together. Uh, they want to fight each other. And you get bonuses when you're fighting kind of that opponent as well. So that's kind of what we're going to be looking at as we play this game. But I want to talk a little bit about, like, why have you come here? You know, what has brought you to uh, Reginium? 
we obviously know Cam, you were chosen to represent uh, Reginium as the, you know, athlete that will be playing in the games. You weren't the first choice. We will kind of discover what happened with that other person. Uh, mm -hmm. Latia, I mean, we know what appeals to you about this place, but maybe why do you think that you ended up, you know, finding a way to get here? Mm -hmm. Hmm. We'll think about it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I'm going to add as well for you to think on, uh, you know, Minotaur is one of the ways that they end up kind of like training Endarks, like, you know, they've chosen you, like, well, not they have, the Eidolon has chosen you, mm -hmm. and then they sort of like secluded you inside of one of the labyrinths that is a part of their city-state, and that is where you do a lot of your training and your learning, so there is a bit of isolation in coming up as a Minotaur Endark that might tie into, hey, what happened between then and now to get you now to Reginium. Uh, D'Angelo, any, any thoughts on, I mean, obviously you seem like you're one of the athletes, but are yeah, you like the sure. one that has been sent or are you a backup or are you like, I'm fighting outside of the arena and making like busker money? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's, uh, I come from a long line of accountants and it was either going to become an accountant or chase my dreams of becoming a, uh, wrestler. So I chose the, uh, ladder and, uh, now I'm here trying to prove my, my gusto and my might and, uh. And and yeah, and hopefully I've been accepted after having like you know a fat lip and like you know a black eye to to be able to perform in front of giant crowds and achieve my dream of being a a buff boy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll leave that to you. Like, are are you there representing the chimeras, or are you still trying to get like trying to prove yourself? Uh, unofficially, I'm representing the chimeras. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm trying my best. Yeah, I'm, I'm like. Mostly the water boy, but I'm trying to prove myself. Okay, <laughs> unofficial. I'm very curious now. Unofficially, so you can shapeshift and stuff, you know? Is is the person who was chosen and is there representing the chimeras actually the person that they think it is? Uh, we're going to say... Yeah, that like... Yeah, okay. Yeah. So when we start, that person is that person, but hey... Things right. happen to people, well, well, as maybe, we've seen for the phoenixes. Maybe it'll be the, that comical response where, like, some the, the one of the dudes got accepted and passed out and was super, super drunk, and then we decided to just like, you know, square yeah, you the had jaw, that night before. You know. You're having the ambrosia. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I love. We can definitely explore that kind of idea because, yeah, Chimera is like you can literally shape shift and look like different people. Oh, he's people. got a, a very prominent pompadour as well, so like you can't miss <laughs> it. He's gonna. I love it because you're like you're very short, but you just have like foot high hair exactly yeah <laughs> it's so good and you just like fight i love it uh that's great so yeah so you're kind of here as like kind of part of this you know group of almost like groupies with kind of the main athlete and you're like i i can do this i i've got it and maybe you'll get your chance maybe we'll see that chance appear for you maybe there'll be opportunities that appear for you sam what has brought your character to Virginium? I am the athlete. Love it. It is not because I care about the games. There is something here ah. that I want. And I made a whole lot of deals and stabbed a whole lot of backs to be the athlete here so that I would be in a position to get it. Totally. Uh, I love that, especially because, you know, you've got the sirens are definitely, they're the pirates. I mean, they're all about, hey, we want treasure, we want, we're free, we don't really care. Hey, this doesn't belong to anybody, which means that it can belong to us if we want it to. Um, so this is definitely an opportunity that's really interesting for them as a whole. But being able to be the one representing it, there is definitely, like, let's say there's some kind of prize being offered here. Hi, or there's, some there's something that only the athletes can access. Yeah. Uh, so yes. by being there and being in that position, uh, yeah, I'm not the most that. athletic. I'm probably throwing it for the sirens, <laughs> but I don't care because this thing is here. I love it. Yeah. So there is some area that, you know, the other people coming don't get to access. Only the athletes are going to be able to kind of get into these spaces to be able to do this. Maybe this is also a way that Latia, you kind of get connected into this because we have these at people who are athletes. Yeah. And you're somebody who wants to map this place out it's the only opportunity to do it you might be going into places that you maybe shouldn't be going yeah absolutely i was gonna say um just kind of reading a little bit about the um about regnium in the book they've got gold mines and what yeah. are mines 
but giant labyrinths. So, um, Absolutely. so they kind of, you know, I've been trained, like there's no maps of this place, but they've trained me to kind of learn my way around places that I don't know so that I can get in there and map out their precious gold mines. Absolutely. Nobody's ever done it. And yeah, these are spaces that haven't been shown to anybody. You've got these senses that you can start to navigate through here. And these are the areas that, you know, maybe there's some area in here where the athletes are going to be able to access that nobody else can. And maybe you four will end up being able to discover something by happenstance that will lead us into some intrigue and some plot going along with all of the games that we have going. Uh, I, I love it. Um, let me now do some sort of session zero stuff about, you know, what kinds of things we want to see in this game. So it seems like we've got three athletes. Do we want to be able to see some of these games happening and participating in some of these events? Or is that stuff that is happening in the background of the other drama? I wouldn't mind seeing a couple of games, personally. Okay. Yeah, we'll be able to see how Churro performs, how our second Phoenix does, and how uh, see how much Siren will throw it. <laughs> see if they can finagle a situation whereby they win by, Absolutely. I don't know, what they sabotage. <laughs> hey, I mean, we're, we're, we're talking about potentially, you know, this idea of the original Chimera somehow getting removed from being able to perform and Chiro needing to step up into that role. I don't know how yeah. any of those things could possibly connect that, together. That doesn't even make it, no, that's nothing. Sorry, sorry, I, that's Just nothing. Uh, let me try a different idea. Fleeting <laughs> thought. Yeah, uh, no, I love it. I'm, I'm really, really excited to see how this is all coming together. Um, as far as, you know, the, how these character sheets have come along and, you know, where your characters have started from, I think that's what we're going to explore next video. You know, let's get some names, some pronouns for these characters. Obviously, we know Churro. Um, and then let's start to sort of describe, like, how, what, when did you get the call from your idol on? Like, when were you chosen? And, you know, why do you think you were chosen, maybe? You know, and, and what happened before you were chosen? Like, who were you before that? And who did you become because now you had these powers? Uh, and I'll maybe throw that to D'Angelo first, since you, you sort of have this idea of who Chiro is now really clear. Do you have some ideas of, like, hey, why, why did you get the call? Who were you before that even happened? So you said you were like, you know, child of this family yeah, of accountants. Definitely like a shown in anime. He was a boy with a dream. And uh, <laughs> he, like, he he loved his uh, idol and, and for, like former wrestler, championship wrestler, Baklava. And he wanted to be like the next great like performer and wrestler. And uh, didn't have approval from his parents. So he like uh, just, just left one night in the middle of the night and then just like, left his hometown to go and chase his dreams and work out, get swole, get buff, and uh, made his own costume, no learned how to sew, and um, yeah, and, and all that kind of stuff in order to assemble the tassels and the costume, and it's, it's good stuff. I yeah. love it. I love that, and especially this idea because, like, you know, the Chimera cult is, like, there's a lot of stuff about, you know, intimidation and having, like, control and kind of, like, having this, like, fiery person. That kind of translates really well into... Well, I mean, you can turn kind of this intimidation and fire into like having, you know, the show stuff and kind of star power intimidation and, you know, fireworks and firepower making a really amazing performance. And I, I'm interested what you think, kind of the cult of the Chimera, the other people who are Endarks and other people who are, you know, the priests that are kind of really significant in this thing that aren't Endarks, but they do kind of represent uh, that's part of the society. How do they feel about the way that your character is using that power? I think it's, it's, uh, they're very offended. You know, they're very like, uh, they don't, they don't like it. It's this new age stuff, like these darn kids and, uh, yeah, these youths and that's <laughs> how they're treating it. Yeah. And then they're rock and roll. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I love it. Yeah. Just breaking these traditions. They're like, we need to go to Reginium. We need to like, bring all of these things about our culture and really share this and you're just like yeah but like look at this all this cool new stuff we can do uh it definitely is an interesting conflict uh that I'm really excited to explore I think that'll be very fun uh Sam what do you think about your character like when did you get the call why what changed for you before having these powers to after uh Harissa was a a 
Bullipper, an acolyte to Minotaur, who was n not accepted. Um, they are, they're not scholarly. Uh, they are not, they were not that flavor of savvy. They couldn't find their way through a labyrinth with a ball of yarn and a bag of cookie crumbs. Um, but yeah, they were a bull leaper who left that and in the scarcity of trying to hard scrabble a life for themselves thereafter, beg, borrowed, and well, mostly stole. And in that, uh, managed to catch the eye of uh, the siren cult and more specifically the siren whom they got along a little better with, but it means that they'll uh, probably find themselves feeling a certain kind of way um, yeah, about uh, one of our fellow PCs. Yeah, well, and even just among your own people as kind of they're, you know, supporting this idea of bringing you here and, you know, having opportunities to, you know, access some things and get some cool treasure and all of that. And, but you're, you're still kind of like, even though you've been chosen by the Eidolon, I would, I would like to ask you, uh, do all the people of the Siren, like, is, is there anybody that resents you for it? Is everybody, or is everybody like, no, you're cool. Like, we're oh. totally accepting of outsiders. Yes. One has to step on a whole lot of throats to get to the top. Excellent. There's no question there is there is resentment. There's the, the knives I have left in backs, let me tell you right now. Yes, <laughs> They're going to get it. pulled out of their backs and thrown at me someday, and I'll just have to be tougher than they are when that day comes. I love it. Excellent. So I love it. We've got some like, we have resentment from like, hey, you're this outsider who is now said you're going to represent us here. And then we have Churro who is like, you're, you're not doing it right. You are not doing the things that we're supposed to do. What are you doing? Stop it. Stop. Um, I love it. And then we have uh, Latia, your character. So we have somebody who is now going to be an ex-Minotaur uh, acolyte. So I guess I'll ask both of you, uh, have you ever met each other before, or will this be the first time both you're meeting each other or even hearing about each other? I want to say that Minoa has heard of Hisa. Yeah. Um, maybe not maybe not in name, but in reputation. Like a cautionary like tale. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, absolutely. But uh, Minoa was actually primed to be a different cult's end arc, but the Minotaurs were like, no, look at her artistry. Like we, like all, we, we are forced to remember our paths, but she is drawing them. She is walking them and she is drawing them. And this would be so, this is revolutionary <laughs> for us yeah. with all of this knowledge in our brains. Imagine if it's on paper that we can access whenever we want to. So um, she may or may not have been kidnapped. <laughs> Ooh. at a young age um and brought up in selenium with the with the other minotaur and arcs and uh that is how she uh became who she is i love it like they were just like you know she has potential we need to foster it mm -hmm. we need to make sure that she gets the call that she is chosen because we need like you you're like this like you are the chosen one mm -hmm. but like what are the what are the you know, negatives that come along with that? What are the dangers that come along with kind of putting this child on a pedestal and raising them specifically to like fill this role? Mm -hmm. And so like, not only like, she's not going to Regnium only because she, they want her to do the specific task, but this is her first time out of Selenium in maybe her whole life since she was brought there. So it's, it's very yeah. much, you know, wide-eyed girl in the big bright world and what awaits for her what awaits her there yeah you know, are you um oh go ahead Kim. Th this this makes me think of an, an epic greek tragedy idea and i don't know if it's been occurring to you or not that that uh minoa is from the siren uh city state yes. in fact, this is a case of switching over oh yeah i was about to um, say that i got it. kicked Switch out to make room yeah there you go yeah. Oh, okay. I like it. Yeah, like because I like literally... it. I am rejected, and you are chosen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And it is very much like 
that's how you got to Sire. And it was like, they were like, this, they, no, this kid is everything we wanted Minotaur to be. And just like switch them, just switch them. Yeah. We don't want that one, but we do want this one. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys cool with that? Does that sound fun? I'm so cool I like with this. It. Yes. Heck, I mean, yes. I would like to find my way to it. Uh, like, yes. we don't, just give, yeah, like, give don't, me yeah. more like, bootstrappy reject energy Holy. so that I can fuel that like weird misplaced resentment of of golden child Manoa please yeah I love this Bronze kind of child, opportunity yeah <laughs> I love this opportunity to kind of like go over like meta like what we know and what we think and then you know in character we don't know the stuff but as players we do and we can like kind of push the story in those directions and really like work together to make really cool moments out of it like having great all these moments for your character Sam to just like get rejected so much and have to fight tooth and nail and Manoa having your character being like given things and like you're mm -hmm. special and we need to like protect you and treat you well and do these things and it's just gonna oh, I love it so fun um is there somebody Manoa that uh you know is is escorting you do you have an escort that you're here uh yeah yeah I'll, I'll, I'll say this, I'll say that I do um some not quite matron not quite matronly mother type like we're not going game of thrones with the septas yes. but like somebody who is also somewhat talented so that way there's a connection like that that manoa grew up and this person wasn't just like you have to do these things it's, it's a it's kind of a like a foster mother relationship totally yeah so like this foster mentor parent. this foster parent yeah. love it um so somebody that like there's a good connection there it's not like mm -hmm oh my gosh, you need to like stay here and be careful. Like it is my job to protect you. And that is the only reason I'm here. There's actually like an emotional connection there. Mm -hmm. uh, I love that. Um, do, you, do you have a name you'd like to give that person? Um, not yet. Not yet. Okay, well, no worries. I will leave that. Uh, Cam, can you tell us a little bit about your character? So uh, I chose the name Phaios, uh, F-A-I-O-S, Phaios, which is Greek for gray, because I'm going to go even more meta and have this be the sort of like a Jean Grey kind of situation, because Phoenix, uh, that's a bit of an extreme um, reference for those who don't. So, so yeah, your name Phaios, do you just wear denim? Uh, no, that's not, that's not where I'm at. Uh, I don't think that we're going to go that far. Um, my, my, my thought is that I wasn't even an ender up until uh, recently. Uh, I think that I was a very, very, uh, obviously the last person to the party, the last one to the party, uh, Keen Eyed Warden, my whole life is like, we have secrets here, we have precious things here, you cannot let anyone in. If by any measure anyone gets into our borders or into our cities or anything else like that, then, then the world will end. They'll take everything and it'll be gone, right? So that's been ingrained for me as a, as a child. And I was chosen because I'm, I was there, <laughs> you know, basically like, uh, and also him. Uh, and so that was the thing, you know, like there wasn't any room for me in the priesthood. Um, I wasn't the best kind of warrior, but I was, I was, I was good at seeing things. I had a good uh, sort of perception and all that sort of stuff. So they raised me with that, not an Endark, no, no promise to be one. No one said this is going to be an option for you. There are Endarks who are heroes among the Phoenix. Uh, cult that's great there are cultists uh, priests and things who talk about these amazing endless timeless immortal people who constantly just uh, referred to wasn't my job wasn't what i'm doing uh, and then talk about this whole decathlon idea talk about sort of doing it uh warring conflict within the people and even the priests who are talking about whether they want to do it or not uh and i guess the majority have won um but for some reason, the one that they chose uh, didn't come back to life when something horrible happened to them. And instead, I got it. I so, literally was going to suggest like a Phoenix Endark actually died. And yeah. that is a big like question mark of, oh my God, you're not supposed to be able to die. Yeah. And especially, oh my gosh, why is that guy now the yeah. new Endark? What, what happened there? Um, and I also love this idea that there really aren't that many of us. Like, yeah. that perhaps we have the fewest amount of endarks of all the different city-states because we don't die, right? It's like Archdruids, where, like, you are going to live for hundreds and hundreds of years, so you are the one. Same thing with Phoenix. D'Angelo, did you have a point? 
Yeah, uh, Cam, there's an issue with my character sheet where it says uh, Theos is Churro's new best friend. So is that, <laughs> is that uh, <laughs> I don't know if it says on your sheet. Is that but, a like, bug or? Uh... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he is definitely like, um, one of the influences of, of Idol and Alpha was Final Fantasy. And I like the idea that everyone has this kind of somewhat JRPG sort of like uh, look about them. Uh, and, and many of those games, there's always an undercurrent of like, you were brought up in nowhere and now you've become important i think having all this thrust upon fires now is going to be really interesting too because he, he's not been schooled by priests and how the end are supposed to lead their lives um but they don't have an option so that's like okay well i'll do it right yeah so that's my sort of fish out of water but also you know runner up i love it and i absolutely love as well that we now have this like contrast where we have three player characters who are all either rejected or they're the second choice or they're really vying to become something. And then we have Latia's character who is getting everything. You're like, you are the special one. You are important. We love you. Here, have this, have this. Like, you're very important. And I, I love this contrast that we're creating. And I think that's going to lead to really interesting character interactions. Um, I'm, I'm really, really excited. Um, so my next thing that I want to ask is, where do you all want to begin this story? Do you want to begin where people have already arrived and we're going to kind of start where, you know, maybe it's, you know, part of the first day of you are here, or do we want to have any, like, you know, we're just getting to this place, everything's really new, except for, of course, Theos. Uh, you know, one way is going to be, you know, none of you have really been able to see each other or connect yet. The other way is, you know, the athletes at least will have met each other previously, which might then lead to, D'Angelo, you're mentioning that maybe Churro and Theos have met before, or do we want to have that happen in the game? I like the just arriving, because it, it, it presents to me that kind of Final Fantasy X, everybody's just getting to Luca before the Blitzball tournament mm -hmm. sort of yeah. thing. So uh, I like I like that. Yeah, and there's like the sense of wonder of like, oh my gosh, all of these different cultures all coming together in one place for the first time ever. We can kind of really lead in with that. That like, hey, we are all outsiders. Let's learn about this place together. Uh, sweet. And then yes, we can definitely have the Angelo like a really early scene where you two are going to have an opportunity to meet. He made we the mistake of answering your question and being nice to me <laughs> and then I can't leave aside now. Yeah, because you know he's the only other athlete here who actually knows this place, right? He's a, a source of information that nobody else is, which Sam, for you, might also appeal because you're looking for something specific. And be funny this though, Theos too, is going to be that one resource of information. I don't even think I'm that good of an inside information person. Like, I think that one of the things that makes it interesting about Fios is that he was he was the border person. Like, so if there are if there are communities within the city state of which the priesthood and everyone else sort of maintains a lock on the other uh, secrets and the mines and the gold and everything else. And those of them who aren't really up to that scale in the society are on the outside keeping everyone out, right? I don't know what's in there. I mean, I've obviously heard about it, but I've never been there. Uh, now I can, right? I can walk in and go, huh, I'm an end dark, fit me in. Uh, but I think that'd be funny if I'm gonna spend half the time making this shit, <laughs> excuse me, for, for the benefit of those who say, what's it like? And they're like, oh, uh yeah uh, that's right it's um it's just really great uh, you know we all we all love it it's the best you know yeah i love it you just make stuff about this place and like y'all just gonna like believe it like of course i've never been yeah, inside a D4 this place for reason, uh, so i believe anything i anyone love it says. yeah i i already love this relationship of like i'm gonna make stuff up i'm gonna buy it wholesale mm -hmm. um delightful um Okay, uh, is there anything specifically that you're like, I really hope that we get to do this kind of thing? Like, I really hope we get to do some like naval something, or I really hope we get to do this type of thing or this type of scene, this type of action, because uh, I'll make sure that I'm gonna like build in opportunities for us to do that. Uh, so if there's something that you really, really wanna see happen, let's do it. I know I am looking for a thing. Mm -hmm. I know Minoa wants to map things, like a place. Yeah, there should probably be not like you know a a dungeon crawl. Yeah, but like there's uh, a hidden like unknown area, like a temple or a labyrinth or something that is like right, a sneaky flavored exploration that we totally. where we probably shouldn't be, 
and That's presumably just, this group is going to have to work together despite our disparate like you're a map maker and I need to find things and yeah. and uh Fi- Fias knows where things are best if discovered accidentally yes ooh you know the the character who leans against the wall that they don't know flips <laughs> open and <laughs> well, that just add yes. churro yes. next time. Jeez, yes. literally, go, okay. we've got. I want to find this. I want to map this. I am. I. I'll make up what I think it is. And Tro's like, I found it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I love the just energy here. That's great. So yeah, some sort of like exploration. We want to kind of like again, not dungeon crawl, but something in that vein of like, hey, we're not supposed to be here. We want to find something. We want to go through something. I, I love it. Yeah, uh, I really like, just, I really just want to play the mummy, but in Greece. That's all I'm that, saying. Oh I mean, I, that's what I always want to play. So, for me, obviously, like combat encounters, because like, yeah. please, because I, I'm useless. Oh yeah, you've made this like, like wrestler. I love it. <laughs> exactly, but I'm also a fan of like dope masquerades where we're all wearing masks and have to like complete something with like diplomacy or with much like yeah. nobles or whatever if possible but like yeah, like hiding and blending in to try and yeah okay cool you know the the end dark um welcoming party right you yeah. know they have to have a, they have to have a dinner where all the end darks get together and like carouse yep, and we, have, we can meet the other champions and all that kind of stuff it's yeah. like yeah. night of the after the opening ceremony like there's always going to be that thing where mm-hmm. it's like all of them and it's just like a party and then it's the athletics where we're not supposed to be doing things because you're supposed to be resting in between your sports and anyone who's ever heard of the olympics knows that doesn't happen because <laughs> you're all athletes you're in the best condition of your life you look so good and you're just around other people who are also in the best condition of their life the opportunities uh no i love it so we've got some like exploration desires we have some like blending in like social uh you know intrigue related desires and i mean i also have obviously we're thinking about this comparison between you know the people that are you know the second best or the rejected versus like people that are chosen which is a big thing and i don't know but like because all of you were technically chosen but it means different things to different people obviously like we talked phoenix is like there's very few that are ever chosen since they can just last forever whereas something like siren i think there's more of you because you're you know pirates like the the risk rate of your lifestyle is pretty high there's high turnover now yeah. how much of that is from circumstance how much of that is from fellow endarks yes like hey i mean say. i wonder if there's room for more endarks oh no that pirate captain passed oh. away unexpectedly oh no, oh, no. right i like I, to think, <laughs> I like to think that siren endarks also use their song to lure potential future endarks like it's not all just oh. It's not all just, you know, death and glory. Some of it is like, no, that one, we want that one. Yeah, it's still about like longevity of like, we still need to exist and we want the best of the best. Hmm. We each that. lead a gang of pirates per the the setting, which means that there is this lovely opportunity for mentorship. It's, it's you know, these are ours. If you touch them. These have pamphlets that you're like... <laughs> <laughs> you heard about the our Lord and Savior uh, sirens? Yeah. It's like, you know, you know, like a college meet, like all these different colleges are trying to sell you on like theirs, but it's just different siren ships that are like, no, 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 come with ours. We have this great health plan. <laughs> I think each of the each of the great idolons has their own their own weird way of doing this stuff, right? I mean, I think yeah. Siren has no problem with um their own index squabbling and choosing and fighting and gravity and doing the whole thing. Whereas the Phoenix is very different, right? And I think what's going to be interesting is I would like to explore at least partly what's going on with the Phoenix cult because it doesn't seem as if it's yes. it's doing its what it used to. Right? Cam legitimately like one of the like few things that I've written down of like potential like plot threads depending on how these characters build was something about a Phoenix and Dark dying, and then you were like, I want a Phoenix and Dark to be dead, and I was like, you got it. This is definitely <laughs> going to be a plot thread, and I'm very very excited to explore like what caused that, why. What implications does it have that suddenly somebody who is supposed to be immortal wasn't? Um, I think that that's going to be an interesting mystery to tie into these other things of sneaky exploration and social intrigue, tying in that mystery and things. 
uh, I know my character already has a fairly de- like bold relationship with another cult, uh, but I am interested either mine or like anyone's in exploring like these specific foes. Like I know I chose an antagonist, uh, but like there are these like these individual, no, uh, screw you in particular, kind of relationships like uh, the Sirens is with the Gorgon, uh, the Minotaur is with the Leviathan and so on. And interesting, yeah, the Phoenix, one of their allies is the Siren. So, you know, thinking about, you know, Cam, your character being a warden, yeah. you're kind of more on the outside. So there's probably some connection with Siren cultists. Like, they don't get to come into the city, but there is probably some, like, trade, alliance, negotiation stuff. And would your character have been privy to any of that? Yeah, I think that for a great deal of the time, uh, the, the Phoenix cult has actually been benefiting from a positive working relationship with the pirates because they do kind of like help keep people away too, right? And uh, if, if we want people to not not come in here and take our stuff, let's have, you know, the roads and the seas be uh, terrorized by actively promoting piracy. So, yeah. you know. We're also an excellent source of goods that can't be got other ways. Like if you are sort of a closed off place, and you want nice things, you know, yeah. a little under under the table, uh, obols and go there. Yeah. Is the Griffin going to be enemies of the Phoenix? Is that correct? Um, the Wyvern is enemy of the Phoenix. The uh, si- none of you are have picked the enemies of your cult, so you four do not have like the direct opposition. But yeah. that means that I get to use those oppositions as interesting GMCs. That will mm-hmm. have some really significant cultists that are like, hey, the Wyvern. Or what Siren Gorgon we've got. Uh, let's see, Minotaur has Leviathan and Chimera has Hydra. And those are also interesting because, I mean, the Chimera has allies with Wyvern and Leviathan, but those are the enemies of some of these other people. So there's some going to be some opportunities. And the nice thing about Cortex is because a lot of what we're doing is it's almost like we are sitting down and we are writing a TV show together. And so we don't always have to have this group of people is always together and they're always on the same team. We can have opportunities where, you know, one character ends up being in another scene with some DMCs and maybe they're doing things that actually go against some of the other party members. Maybe there is some opportunities for, hey, we're actually making different alliances and deals over here. And then we are coming and having scenes and, you know, there can be conflict. When I ran Idol on Alpha uh, earlier this year uh, on this show for a different group, the very first episode everybody got into a contest with one another, which is when one player says, I want this, another player says, I don't want that to happen, and you end up rolling against each other. Um, So that is absolutely a thing that Cortex can do. So don't feel like you have to be like, I need to always be on the same team. We're running a TV show. Like, there can be opportunities for, hey, maybe actually I want a different thing than this other player character. I want to split up. I want to go separately. We can definitely, we're going to be like cutting and yeah, going to different scenes and switching around. So you can definitely split up and kind of do different things uh, in the game and work with different characters and alliances and cults uh, that you find really interesting. Also gives me as an antagonist house, uh, good good targets for the yes. backstabbery. <laughs> oh, definitely. definitely. Uh, and I mean, especially because we've already described too, for, for you, there are people in that siren group that are not liking the fact that you are this representative. And so what opportunities are there? You know, if you're looking at sirens, allies of Manticore and the Phoenix, of people being like, well, can we lean on this to try and go against you? And what does that end up meaning for, hey, now your allies are not maybe your allies. Uh, so there's lots of, I think, interest there of us having, especially since this is, this is, we just have been having endless civil war for centuries. And now we're like, we're all going to get along. Well. Yeah, not so much. <laughs> we can sure try. Um, but, you know, from, we can, from what we can see already, from uh, what you all sort of want out of the situation, and we already, you know, kind of have an idea of these other Eidolons, and they might have their own desires. I think it's going to be interesting to see how these relationships pan out or don't pan out. Um, but yeah, definitely feel welcome to really 
you know, hey, you can have one episode where you're really getting along with each other, but then actually something shifts and changes and, you know, the next episode you're working against each other. Uh, we can kind of lean into drama like that and really have fun with it. Again, as long as everybody's having fun with it. Um, again, safety tool reminder, Brie Yeager Sheldon's script change. So if at any point, like we are doing kind of anything that is player against player stuff, we want to make sure that everybody's like having fun with it and it's a fun dramatic moment and not like, hey, we're being mean to each other and somebody's <laughs> leaving here not feeling good about it. As long as we're all like, yeah, this is fun drama. Please, let's argue in character. It's fun. I love it. Um, I love it. So we've got some exploration sneaky stuff, some social intrigue, figuring out the mystery of this dead phoenix. Like, what, how does that tie into things? And getting these interesting enemies, these interesting other cults. So what did they want in having some good antagonists within them that can end up tying into these other mysteries and questions and things what is this thing that sam's character is searching for and how, why does anybody else want it does anybody else know about it uh i think that that's all gonna be pretty interesting i guess i will ask as well Matia, your character is going in wanting to map this out there's not a lot of information that has come out of of this area mm -hmm. but you are the one that is you have the high priest value you've got that high reason uh, you know, thinking about that, do you think that whatever this thing is, you know, right now it's just an undetermined thing, is that something that you think your character is going to have some knowledge of, whether that's from some kind of lore or legend or fable, or if, like, it's actually, like, a historical record that you know of? Um, there is, so it's, it's definitely, like, a historical thing, but it's also, like, a lot of historical things have some kind of legend status ascribed to them, so totally. this thing is known for this thing, but also it could be this thing and that's why we want you to map it. Totally. It's like the historical record is like confused on it. There's like lots of different like things. Which one is like the true thing? Mm -hmm. um, I love it. Yeah. Because that oh, definitely like happens. actual with... historical Troy when they dug through the layer of Troy to get thinking they would get to uh, war era Troy and they just bulldozed right through. <laughs> yeah, they were like, we're going to get to Troy. And it's like, wait, I think we just passed it. At like Troy uh -oh. 7A? We just anyway. wrecked it. Oh no. Oh um, no. That is outstanding. Uh, is there anything here that you still have as an outstanding question that you want us to explore right now or things that you want to make sure that, you know, we're going to have kind of going into our first session next week? I'm feeling pretty good. I feel really excited about it. I think we have a lot of interesting plot hooks and a lot of interesting hooks for you as a as a group of meeting each other and, and having an interest in connecting in some way and being even forced to work together potentially, being trapped and having to work together in those situations. Uh, I think that these characters also just thematically will tie in really well together. I'm really, really excited to like see what story we get into with this. Um, just a small point. I know that we... Yeah. We kind of skipped, well, I just, I've been looking up Greek girl names. Um, so my uh, caretaker's name is uh, Demetra. I love it. Do we all want to have at least one GMC that we um, bring to the... I love it. Yes. Oh, that would be cool. Um, I, I might suggest for you, Churro, like you have this, this actual, the one that is going to be the athlete, but who might end up getting, like, who is that person? Tell me about them. Oh, that would be, I think, Hector, probably. Uh, yeah, so he legit is an athlete. Granted, he's, like, extremely self-destructive. He's the opposite, where he wants to be a veterinarian, but he's forced to be an athlete. He's trained his oh. whole life. So he's having a, a you know, he's trying to self-destruct so he can get kicked out. So it's like, it's like you know what? Totally. Let's, you know, uh, parent trap. So. I love it. He's got like the gifted kid thing going on where he's like, I'm supposed to do this, but I just, I want to take care of puppies, please. That's all I want in <laughs> exactly. my life. Uh, no, I love Hector already. Um, they sound amazing. Okay, so we've got Hector, the actual chosen athlete. Uh, and what is your current relationship with Hector? Like, are, do you want to have that relationship kind of be created through something in the game or do you have an established relationship with him? Uh, it would definitely be one of those situations where it was like uh, antagonists turn homies. So it's like yeah. uh, where I was trying to prove myself, challenge him to a fight, was able to like uh, like pretty much go toe to toe with him, but maybe lost. And then through dialogue, it revealed that like he doesn't actually want this. And then I'm like, well, cool. I, you know, cool. I want it. So, so do you like, want to start it with like this first episode where you still have this kind of antagonist relationship? And then, you know, we can discover that through that 
first course of that of like this is actually we want the same thing or you want to feel like we're coming in and we've kind of just discovered this about each other so now kind of our initial goal is to figure that out uh yeah i think he could be an antagonist where he's still like he knows that i'm parading around like him and uh taking his spot and he like you know all that kind of stuff i love it I love it. Uh, okay, so we've got Hector, we've got Demetra. Um, Sam, who do you want your GMC to be? Yeah, so I, uh, Lydia, if you're cool with it, I would like to know uh, Demetria. I was going to ask that. Given, given <laughs> yeah. that background, um, so that we can like get the connection and I can click so quicker. Here's, here's, here's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Demetra is one of so the name means earth mother so right, it, she is she is one of the the many like there is a a section of the cult that you know raises potential end arcs so she may even have interacted with you yep. before you left yeah i would love the like yeah. Grafting a family dynamic on top of everything that's already here will just make it so gloriously messy. Yeah. Yes. Um, let's do it. So, like, like a pre-exist. Yes. Uh, I would like to ask: Do you think that she um, was a you know she was in agreement with making this switch, or was she somebody who didn't necessarily agree with this switch, and it happened despite her protestations? Let's make it messier. It's the latter. Yeah. Okay. And but but at the same time, she was the one who, because of I think because of it, she is the one who told the cautionary tales. Mm. Yeah. There's oh, like to regret. try to protect you from the same like yeah. thing getting happening. Yeah. Yep. yeah. We want to make sure because I actually cared about that that you know. Mm -hmm. water rat yeah that's and, of course, and maybe now. and maybe like you don't know that she actually cared you might think that she also betrayed you but yep but i definitely that, i yeah. i want to have tried to make her proud with like the teacher's pet energy that has <sighs> now been burned from me oh, oh yeah into oh. just like that resentment but is it's still there spoilers <laughs> um, but in terms of like adding to the world expanding uh yes. with gmc's uh, I would love to add a pirate queen of the sirens. I would love to add, uh, Penthesilea, uh, the pirate queen, uh, with whom I have, like, a uh, uh, spicy rivals relationship, yes. Yes. you know? Yes. It's <laughs> pirates, it has to be. Right? Um, yes. Like, just, oh. I'll kill you someday. Yeah, no, I love yep. it. Um, yep. There's definitely, <laughs> yes, we get Just both, like to, um, to focus yeah. that like weird, you're not supposed to be the athlete here thread and like give that a vessel in a character, uh, mm -hmm. but also have like something Tempted. under contentiousness so that uh, we I can just it. guile at each other. I absolutely love it. Fabulous. Theos, Cam, uh, who would you so like to I introduce? My sister. Uh, Magdalena is a phoenix cultist priestess uh, we were separated when we were very young uh, I, I haven't seen her for a long long time since we were children because once you get inducted into the cult she's not an endark but she's in the cult so she's keeping secrets she's doing this um, shepherding the, the people who are endarks and trying to guide them towards where things are going I haven't seen her all the whole time now for the first time we're allowed to meet each other again and that's going to be a big deal. So yeah, she's, she's like now your guide into this world where like, oh my god, we haven't seen each other, but it's my job to teach you things. Yeah. Oh my god. So that I want that to be a, a dynamic, but I think it will also be really interesting if one of the things because we talked about this these 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 rivalries, but also these allies alliances. Uh, there's an alliance with not only with the sirens, but also with the Hydra. I think with the Phoenix, yeah. and the Hydra cult is like the fifth column cult. Like they put people into other city states and spread yep. out and do the whole thing. And I think my sister has had some involvement in the politics of both the, the relationships with the Hydra and also with the Sirens so that she's going to have that bond with other cults and things that I don't know anything about. I uh, think she's no, I love way, it. way dirtier than, than 
yeah yeah like she has definitely yeah she's got some some skeletons in the closet she's got this involvement with hydra which just gave me an idea that i'm making a note of because i'm very excited by it but also yeah with the sirens i kind of like this idea maybe also that she has some kind of connection with the pirate queen that we just learned about for sam so there's going to be a connection between the sister character and that pirate queen character um so i know that's really fun um i love it so we have some interesting gmcs we can kind of tie into different things and you know, you might discover some more, you might discover some other antagonists that come in because of this, but I love that we have these ones that are going to kind of be this grounding wire for your characters of like, who are these people that are bringing you into this world? Uh, I love it. I'm super duper excited. I'm, I've got so many ideas and I cannot wait to play this game with all of you. Um, but I think for right now, I think we've got characters. I think we've got a, a campaign. I think that we're like totally set. So with that, we have our four end, end arcs who are prepared to step into whatever adventure and intrigue awaits at the Decathlon, which you can tell already. Gonna be something spicy. Um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in today. Please join us next week and for the rest of this month, November, as we start playing with these characters, telling this story. I am incredibly excited to see where we are going to go with this. The drama that is developing here is incredible. If you would like to try Eidolon Alpha for yourself, you can do it right now. You can hop over to CortexRPG.com, get a digital version of the Cortex Prime Game Handbook, and go, you know, flip, I think it's like page 130, flip to it, read it, enjoy. Uh, there are two other settings in there, as well as the rest of the book is all about how to make your own. So if you have an idea that you're like, I wish that this was a TTRPG, you can make it one. Go ahead and grab that book, test it out, try it, have fun. I know I'm biased, but I love it. Check it out. <laughs> If you want, like me, to see more of these wonderful, wonderful people, let's find out where we can do this. Sam, where can people find you on the internet? I'm Sam Delev, and if you make your perception check, you can find me as a role-playing performer and variety streamer throughout the Twitternet. Uh, my Twitter just got dropped in the chat because we have some terrific mods here. But if you want to find my regularly scheduled programs, that is that schedules on my Twitch about page at twitch.tv slash delevely, D-E-L-E-V-E-L-Y. Excellent. Thank you, Sam. Latia. I just want to say one of my goals is to become as adept at sign language spelling as Sam is. I can't spell without that it. That's just how that happens. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> like, I've, I mean, I've watched Sam on streams and things for, for years, and it's always amazing to do, to, to watch. Um, I am Latia. You can find me on Twitter and everywhere that I have a username at Latia Jacquees. Um, L-A-T-I-A-J-A-C-Q-U-I-S-E. One day I will spell it and it will be glorious because I'll use this my is, hands too. This is now like the goal for the final episode of this. You gotta, I'm going like, to spell try. my name in sign language. Um, but yeah, you can find me uh, on Twitter, which is where most of my thoughts go because it's my second brain, which is kind of dangerous. But you can also find me on Sundays at 10 a.m. Pacific Noon Central at twitch.tv slash Rivals of Waterdeep as Dahani, the Aarakocra monk in uh, that game. And uh, if you are going to be at PAX next month, I'll be there. So come hang out and do, uh, um, you know, pandemic appropriate elbow bumps. Yeah. All about it. Definitely. Uh, D'Angelo. Yeah. I'm so tempted to go to PAX. I have like my credit cards there, like wanting to buy like a flight and everything. But <laughs> do it. <laughs> right. So uh, my name is D'Angelo Murillo. I'm a tabletop RPG performer, a writer and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you can find me at on social media at that underscore D'Angelo. Uh, this weekend on my Twitch channel, which is also that underscore D'Angelo, uh, we're doing our first episode of Phoenix by Night, which is a Vampire the Masquerade uh, miniseries, which is super cool. So check it out if you can. And thank you for having me. It was like really fun to be here. Oh, so amazing to have you, D'Angelo. I love having you around. Uh, Cam, where can people find you? Well, uh, I'm really happy that I'm on this with these dazzling stars of, of uh, the internet. Um, you can find me, if you feel like it, uh, at Boy Monster on Twitter. Um, I've also started uh, posting things randomly on Instagram as a Rusty Sellsword. You can find me there too. But uh, I'm also a frequent member and contributor and answering of questions uh, at uh, the Cortex Discord, which I think we can also get a link to, I guess, in the chat. I love seeing you there, talking to things, talking about things, and um, I'm keeping very secret about stuff that's coming up because we can't talk about it. 
Yes, there are many things coming out for Cortex that are very, very exciting. And so stay tuned for all of that. Um, and yes, uh, I was and am Melly Doucette. You can catch me on Twitter at Melly DM and all over the Cortex Discord as well. You can come hang out with me there. Uh, next Monday, actually, in that Discord, I'm going to be running a Tales of Zadia, the Dragon Prince role-playing game character creation preview. So if you're interested in that, uh, you know, we have all the free content up at Tales of Zadia talesofzadia.com, but the character creation isn't coming out to the book. So this is a advance of the book preview and you'll get to make a character. Um, so come and check that out if you would like. And until next week, thank you all and we will catch you later. Have a good one. Bye.